Okay, boys and girls, today we're talking about bushcraft and survival pack considerations. Now, I feature this particular backpack here. This is the Camelback Lynchpin in pretty much all of my videos that you see the backpack in. And this is my go-to backpack for bushcraft, for survival, and actually a lot of different uh, things in general, whether that's backpacking, bushcrafting, survival, camping. It's just a great all-around pack. But today, I wanted to talk about some of the considerations or some of the things that you should try to keep in mind when choosing a backpack. And I wanted to make this video because I feel like uh, the backpack kind of just sits in the background and, you know, there's not a lot of consideration given to packs and to the gear that carries other gear. And uh, this stuff is just as important as the gear that you carry for using one of those, whether that be knives, saws, axes, hatchets, or even things like tents or drop cloth, stuff like that, you know, having a good backpack to carry that gear goes a very long way. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Okay, so one of the first things actually does not start on this side of the pack, but actually starts on this side of the pack, and hopefully you guys can kind of see this, it's a little bit hard. But the first thing for me is what I consider the suspension system. And trying to find a backpack that has a good suspension system and is comfortable to wear for long periods of time is the most important part of your backpack. You're not going to be able to, or really willing or wanting, to carry anything for any distance if the backpack is not comfortable. So for me, this is a reason why I've been a big fan of uh, Mystery Ranch or Mystery Ranch packs uh, that Mystery Ranch packs or mystery or packs that feature Mystery Ranch's uh, system, or their suspension system. I'm trying to remember what it's called, but it is this system that the Camelback Lynchpin uses, and also that my um, Mystery Ranch, I think it's Crew Cab, uses. They both use the same kind of yoke system that they call. Uh, I'd have to remember the name. I'll probably annotate it. But this system is super comfortable for me. And once again, everyone's going to be different. Everyone's going to prefer something a little bit different. But for me, the Mystery Ranch suspension system or yoke system, I think it's called the Futura Harness, if I remember correctly, uh, is super comfortable for me. It's also super versatile, very adjustable. Um, but that is, for me, the number one thing, is having something that's very comfortable to wear and wear for extended periods of time and also something that adjusts to your body well. So the next point for me is something that I know a lot of backpackers usually discourage and usually try to say, you know, don't strap stuff to the outside of your backpack. And it's true, you want to be cautious and you want to be mindful of what you're strapping to the outside of your backpack. And yes, anything that's strapped to the outside is not as secure as the things that are inside. But the ability to strap things to the outside of your backpack is a really big deal. And in fact, it's kind of where the linchpin falls short in some ways. You can get creative, especially with these straps right here and right here. But having good mechanisms and abilities to load the outside of your backpack is very important because especially as bushcrafters or even in survival, there may be things such as guns, such as saws, uh, and other items that you may simply not be able to put in a pack either due to length or due to width or sometimes you can put it in your pack but it takes up so much space that it's best left outside. That's what I do a lot of times with my sleeping bag and some of my other sleeping setup stuff is that I attach it to the bottom of this pack as you guys can see here with these mounting points. Um, I'll attach stuff to the bottom of the pack that way um, I'm leaving space on the inside of the pack to pack some of the more smaller things that do genuinely need to be inside of the pack. So having a good ability to pack things on the outside or strap things to the outside of your backpack is very important uh, in just about any type of circumstance, whether it is backpacking, hunting, uh, hiking, or bushcrafting, survival, stuff like that. So the next one, and it's not as pivotal, but I do try to recommend, make sure that you have a good internal payload. And, and while it may be hard sometimes to find a pack that has a good internal payload, you really do owe it to yourself to make sure that the pack that you do carry uh, can hold 
the stuff that you need. And the, a good internal payload is kind of a hard um, point to exactly narrow down because you don't want to go excessive, but you also don't want too little. So this is something that you have to figure out, you know, what are you going to be generally carrying on any given day or, you know, just about every circumstance, what is your general payload looking like and what is a pack that will allow you to carry all of that and then a little bit more. So sometimes this pack is filled with less than that, sometimes it's brimming full, you know, it's just at that level. Um, but most of the time it runs you know pretty well for me and let's see the camelback linchpin is my go-to because of its payload size i can usually carry just about everything that i realistically need uh, in this backpack for just about any given outing or any given duration um, of time so that's why i like the pay or yeah so that's why i like the linchpin but overall you do have to find a pack that will support your missions your you know, outings, and make sure that it will carry everything that you need it to carry within reason. Then lastly, I try to recommend going for a good color, and this one kind of might seem, you know, a little bit arbitrary, you know, you might be like, well, Matthew, what the heck does that even mean, you know, why is that important, and oftentimes it's just that you don't want to stick out like a sore thumb, you know, you don't necessarily want something that's crazy colored, you know, crazy reds, oranges, blues, you know, or even greens, I like something that's very subdued, like this linchpin, once again, you know, it's just in a desert tan color, it looks good, and it blends in with its surroundings pretty well, so that in case I have to leave my pack somewhere, it's not necessarily going to be the easiest thing to see, or the easiest thing to take. And also, if I have it on my back, isn't just, you know, throwing a large flag out for everyone to see where I am or what I'm doing. So, that's why I try to say pick a good color. Oftentimes, you know, having a little bit of concealability with your pack is usually a good idea. So, those are the primary considerations for choosing a backpack, choosing something that you're going to carry your gear. There's not a whole lot of considerations that need to be made, but you do want to experiment around and see what type of packs uh, work well for you. Like I said, I am a big fan of Mystery Ranch. I love the Camelback Linchpin. Unfortunately, I don't really talk about this pack a lot because it's no longer made and it's actually been discontinued for a number of years, but it is a fantastic backpack and definitely my favorite, my go-to pack. But um, a lot of the lineup from Mystery Ranch themselves is also pretty solid, though it can be a bit spendy, but luckily they also have older models on the sale, so if you are trying to get a more expensive pack for a more reasonable price, you can also check that out. But that is my pack considerations for bushcraft and survival. As always guys, God bless, and I'm out.